I don't know about you, but I am the kind of person that, even if I'm unable to change the outcome of an orchid's decline, I need to understand the why. Especially a once healthy orchid that had some scale in its past, which was dealt with swiftly and was under constant supervision as well as treatment to avoid the pest taking hold. The reason I specifically mention healthy and strong orchids is because we know that weak ones are more susceptible to any kind of pest infestation and subsequently decline because it was weak to begin with and a pest infestation can take weak orchids out because they do not have the strength in form of enough structures or viable roots or other environmental conflicts to recover from a pest attack. So, my nemesis is scale. And while I'm still fighting for some of the orchids that I'm showing as an example, the Y scale does so much damage, even when it has gone and been dealt with, and I had to dig deep to investigate as to find an answer that would at least put that part of me to rest. Does it change the possible outcome? Nope. Have I lost orchids even though I understand the why? Yes. And the frustrating thing is, losing an orchid to scale, even if the pest is under control or even fully eradicated, that process can take years. Now, to explain the principle of the long-term effects that scale can leave on an orchid, we need to think of mosquitoes. There is a huge similarity to what a scale insect does to the tissue of an orchid where it sucks the juices out to what we feel when mosquitoes take a bite out of us. So, thank you for humoring me for a moment. That mosquito sting and the following itching is the mosquito injecting their saliva into our skin and the proteins in that saliva trigger an allergic reaction in most people causing the familiar itching and swelling. These proteins that mosquitoes inject serve a purpose and the main one is to inhibit blood clotting, making it easier for the mosquito to access the blood in form of liquid before our body responds to the wound and the blood clots. In essence, the proteins in the mosquito saliva act as a complex cocktail of substances that help the mosquito to feed by interfering with the human body's normal physiological processes and triggering immune response. Now, I think you are already ahead of me by now having heard that and making the connection of what scale does when it bites into the tissues of our orchids. But give me a minute to explain what the salivary proteins actually do in the cells of our orchids in a little bit more detail to get an understanding of the damage they leave behind and in some cases the total destruction of the orchid long after the scale have been dealt with and the orchid had been scale free. It could potentially answer why nothing really works against scale and maybe also makes us growers feel a little bit better that all we do is our best to help bring the orchid through a scale attack. But should we fail, then knowing the post-attack destruction of the salivary proteins may help in making the demise of any orchid more digestible. <laughs> Pun intended. So what salivary proteins do when injected into the cells is they mediate the key processes ranging from nutrient acquisition to plant defense manipulation. Not plant defense manipulation. It's all just in that little phrase there. But it gets even nastier. Salivary proteins play a pivotal role in modulating plant defenses. They induce and or inhibit plant defenses as elicitors or effectors. In piercing sucking insects, salivary proteins accompany the gelatinous and watery saliva secreted from salivary glands penetrating into the plants. Those proteins facilitate digestion, digestion of secondary metabolites, detoxification, as well as activation and suppression of plant defenses and so on and so forth. And this is what I was thinking but had no proof of, that the salivary proteins and to some degree enzymes suppress the plant's defenses, not just while they are digesting the juices and the cells they have injected, but long after the plant is free from scale. I believe that these proteins can travel through the cells by way of capillary action, destroying the tissue as they travel through the cells. I hope that makes sense because when it comes to some orchids that I have treated and babied post-scale attack, it is as if the orchid tried to come around but never really could 
And in my limited judgment of the biology of all of this, the conclusion I came up with is that the orchid is weakened over time because of the salivary proteins and enzymes still being present and active within the orchid, making a comeback of that orchid near to impossible. I read up on the proteins and found that it is expected that gel saliva contains wall softening and degrading enzymes, which facilitate the stylet progress of sucking insects, which would also include aphids, but they're so easy to deal with as opposed to scale, so I'm sticking with scale. But based on the degrading enzymes, it is no surprise that several cell wall degrading enzymes were found among salivary proteins, although only a few have been attributed to gel saliva with certainty. So this study and these questions I was having, they are still ongoing. But to name a few that have been identified as potential cell degrading enzymes are pectinases, pectin methylesterases, and polygalacturonases. Now, because plants have an uncanny evolution of self-defense activation when they recognize a potential attack, in come some sucking insects like scale, and they counteract these plant defense destroying salivary proteins, which is the same as what mosquitoes do when injecting their toxin into us. That numbs the area where they pierce the skin in order to get into the vein they are looking for before our body can respond to the attack, and our brain sends the message of a sting to us. However, by the time we try to swat the mozzie, it will have already pulled up what it was looking for, and if lucky, fly away, leaving us to look silly because we just smacked ourselves. <laughs> anyway, when scale bites into the tissue of our orchids, our orchids' automatic plant defenses are suppressed by the salivary proteins, so the defense mechanism never kicks into action. The cells that are in the immediate vicinity of the bite are reduced to a liquid because of the salivary proteins, which is what is necessary for the scale to be able to actually feed off of our orchids. How far now do the enzymes reach into the cells, which turns into liquid? My guess is the width of the scale body of the adult scale, which we can then discern as markings circular in shape and often white, but with orchids that present anthocyanin in their DNA, the outer edges of that bite damage will be red or burgundy in color, just like a scar would form which seals off the wound. However, I also suspect that the active molecules from scale secretion by capillary action have a significant impact on the plant immunity as some of those cell-destroying, defense-inhibiting, and liquefying proteins and enzymes go deeper into the plant cells and over time, some orchids will not be able to recover no matter how hard we try. That was all a bit of a mouthful, but know that I look forward to your take on this. What do you think? Do you know more specifics than I could possibly cover in a video? The comments are there for a reason, so share your knowledge with the rest of us and let's learn and grow together with a better understanding of what happens to our orchids long after the scale is gone.